Hello friends, you're with a lonesome gamer, and I'm still playing Dungeon Universalis. Now, first I, I gotta do a correction. Um, someone wrote in a comment that I kind of messed up the AI behavior of the giant in that massive battle. And I realize that's correct. I think it's a little bit different than he actually wrote, because... Um, the thing is, usually when you have these target priorities, um, for example here, where it says, first the closest enemy, then the enemy with the lowest courage, and then the enemy with the lowest vitality. And you follow this, but if it's a leader, you don't follow this anymore, but you kind of randomly determine with a die roll which which target priority of these available priorities it is. So, uh, but it's again, it seems to be again an exception with the large creatures because there you're gonna have to roll a die anyway. And I simply missed that. I didn't read that. I thought this is the target priority. And first they go for a random adjacent enemy. And I don't know what I thought, to be honest. I didn't really read that. Um, yeah. So the thing is, I think, I, yeah, I should have rolled the die every time there was an attack by the giant, which would have made the thing much less predictable. I think in the end, considering how well I was doing, I mean, everybody had still enough fortune left to survive at least one attack. Sometimes could have even survived two attacks. Um, I think in the end I would have killed him anyway. But it might have been a little more chaotic. Um, still, the dwarfs, the dwarf and this guy, they each had three attacks per turn. So I think after three turns it would have been over probably... Uh, one way or the other but it is possible that uh, I think he attacked for I don't know for one or two turns he attacked the only the the cat and the falcon and I think that would not have happened automatically he could have also attacked one of the others instead um, that would have been something that should have been rolled randomly. And uh, that might have made a difference. And yeah. But okay. Uh, it's definitely too late now to fix this in any way. I am. Yeah. It's a bit of a shame. I, I was pretty proud that I, I won that thing. Uh, now I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed that I kind of messed up so badly here. But, okay, I know it for the next time you live and learn. Um, so, now we're sitting here, still in Thame, and I want to go here to buy a falcon or some kind of animal. I also do a little bit of a random offer there so that I don't have everything available and because I just think that that is a little more reasonable and then after I did that I'm gonna go back and then move here to Aris Thai and I think this is the place where the next adventure awaits the horse thieves so uh, but first I'm considering uh, maybe, I don't know if I still want to buy potions. I still have a couple of bucks left. Hmm, I'm not sure. I think I actually want to go... I think I want to leave here for now. And uh, move along the road further. So let's see, I think I think of... Uh, a four plus is an event. 
So yeah, we do have an event. So let's see what that is. So the card says rumors. We get some information about a forthcoming stage in your journey that keeps you alert. The dark player removes the danger marker, which is closer to you, to your current location. Okay, that's kind of neat. So I guess this one is removed then. And now the guy moves again here. And we continue moving. Roll again the die here. Oh, first we got to roll if we have an encounter at all. Let's see. Okay, that is four, so that means we do have an encounter. And it is number one, so it's this one. Is it the same? Yes, yeah, same encounter again. Okay, nice. So that means this one goes away too. Awesome. And then we move in here. That is a castle. So I gotta find the cards for that. Okay, again, a four plus, and we do have another event. So let's see. What's number two? Infraction. One random hero must pass an intelligence test. If he fails, the heroes will be surprised by the guards after committing a small brawl or infraction. Play the places and services card guards. Okay, so let's see. Um, so first, let's see which hero that is. That's four. That's good. That is her. So I think she will be able to do it. She needs a five. And she has that. So no problems here. Nothing happened. Okay. So we're sitting in there now. And uh, now we can visit the... The breeding ground. Okay, I guess I want to buy a Warhound here. This is basically the offer that is there for me. And I'm, I want to go for the Sharp Senses. That is for me the main reason why I want an animal or a pet. Because of the Sharp Senses. That's very useful. Um, I'm just wondering if, for example, if I had the Warhound and the Eagle and they would be both in range of the cat, could she then get the bonus for both animals? I mean, the thing is, the Warhound has sharp senses, so has the Eagle, and she has that too. So could I come up with a plus three bonus? Um, I don't know. I think I don't see anything that... that if you have an idea about that, please let me know. I'm just, I'd be curious about that. So now we gotta pay another six bucks for the dog. And then we're basically ready to, to start the adventure. We just have to move back. Okay, so now we leave the city and we travel again on the road. And is that a, I think a four plus. Yeah, we need a four plus for an event. So then we enter this area here and we stay on the road. And this time we have an event. So let's see what that does. There we go. That is event number three. Oh boy, that's a bridge. You must cross a bridge or else lose a considerable time finding an alternative road. Place the bridge places, play the places and services card bridge. Okay, so if I remember that right, we got to do a persuasion test here against the guards who have an intelligence of four and she's going to do that. So let's see. Oh, oh, that's not good enough. So that means we got to spend, I think, four bucks, if I'm not mistaken here. I think one coin per hero. Well, actually, I think that should not have happened. I cannot take the road. I have to go this way here now because the road leads in this direction. So um, actually, I'm going to leave the road here 
and I don't know. Now you know I don't know. It's tricky. If we come from here, we can stay. Yeah, that's tricky. You know what? I'm gonna leave it that way. I'm gonna say okay. I stayed on the road. I mean, I don't want to roll for both. You know that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I go here on the road, and then I just. I mean, I gotta go this way. But I don't want to roll twice. So it's a little tricky if you travel from here to here, for example, and then you want to go here. Do you run do you roll here for the road? Or do you roll for the plane? I don't know that. And that is where the rules are not so clear with the campaign rules. They leave some room here when it comes to movement and so for some for me at least, it's not always clear. So anyway, I'm gonna pay the four bucks now. And now I'm going to enter this area here, and i got to roll again for the plane. So I'm not sure what that is. Let, let's roll a die first. That's a three, I think. I'm fine there. Yeah, I need a, a five plus. So there we are. And that means we can now uh, start this next adventure. Okay, so this time the app tells me to go to the campaign book. So let's do that. Someone has stolen three valuable thoroughbred horses from the warlord stables at Irish Thai Castle, who intended to present them to the Emperor at his next spring celebrations. The chief of the guard is looking for a group of people who might be able to recover them. The animals have a distinctive mark on their hind legs, so it will be easy to identify them. They are very likely to be found in some of the stables in the region. Okay, so, uh, let's see. Setup. No achievement or reserve point counters are used. Neither is the Dark Player's card deck. Well, yeah, okay, that's a shame. I like that. Set aside face up one of the encounter cards labeled Enemy Spotted. I mean, the thing is, this is kind of a first mission of... You know, it says here of a kind of an of a sub campaign or so. So maybe it's 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 super easy like the the first mission in the other game. I just don't know that. We fight against or yeah the 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 enemy is from the Tai Xiang Empire. That's a, a new faction that we encounter this time. And uh, okay, we have stables. In each of these sections that are numbered with a one, let's see. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, let's see. Okay, so this is the scenario map. Uh, we're starting up here. The scenario is completely revealed, so there's no dark player, no traps, no stuff like that. I guess we can just open the door. I don't think, why not? So, the thing is, all these rooms here are stables. And in three of the five stables, we're going to find a horse. If we found all the horses, we've won the scenario. We have basically 12 turns to do that. If we don't make it within 12 turns, um, I think we still uh, get a part, part, uh, partial victory when we at least find the three horses. But the goal should be to make it in 12 turns. Uh, it kind of works like that, that you have 16 turns and you subtract the number of heroes. So in this case, it's 12 turns. Oh, I, I still got my Warhound. Just, just a moment. Okay, so... Hmm. I think... Yeah. It's a little tricky. I think I'm going to open this door first. The problem is I cannot open... I mean, when I open this door and then there are creatures behind that, 
it will immediately trigger another turn. So um, that would, that these guys could not open. My idea was perfectly. I would open. I would want to go with two guys here and the others here and open both doors in the first turn. But yeah, the problem is that as soon as enemy creatures appear, the first turn is over. But I think I'm going to have to take that risk anyway. So I'm going to move one, two, three, four spaces with this guy and a couple of spaces with her. And now, as an action, I'm going to simply open the door here with her, with the cat lady. And, okay, there we go. And now we got to roll a die and we'll see what happens. We want a six. Now that's a four. Now I think the four means that we found horses or one horse, but that we also have to face some enemies. Okay, so it is actually true what I thought. We found the first horse, but we have to face an enemy um, from the enemy spotted table. And it's going to be an, an enemy worth six value points. So I'm going to roll a die. I'm going to add one. Oh, that is a two. So that sounds good. So that means we get, in this case, we don't take this one because it's only worth four. But we take this one then. And it's two warriors with spear and shield. One warrior with scimitar and composite bow. Okay. So... Let's see. Okay, now this. These are the warriors here. They're not bad. They have a uh, combat strength of four, which is good. They have uh, four life points, which is not that great. So uh, they have a scimitar. And let me see, is that heavy armor? Okay, this guy wears heavy armor. And uh, so a scimitar is less efficient against heavy armor. It's got a minus two, that's good. And let me see, so two warriors with spear and shields. Okay, the spear and shields. And a warrior with a scimitar and composite bow. Okay, so that's going to be a little more complicated. Let's see. Okay, I will use my accuracy longbow to shoot at... I think I'm going to shoot at the guy who has the composite bow. Yeah, so that is... The, the guy back there. And I think we got a minus one modifier because of the distance here. Oh, I only need my dice here. Okay. Uh, that's just good enough because it's uh, the plus one. So in the end, it's no, it's no negative modifier here. So we are good. We did a damage and we can roll, or we did we did hit, so now we can roll. Oh, actually, I forgot. I have to roll. Gosh, I have to roll the initiative first. So let's start this over again. I gotta roll initiative first. And that isn't looking so great. Okay, that's pretty bad. So the thing is, do I wanna accept that or not? Do I wanna re roll that? Hmm. I would need an eight, or I would need a seven. I got a plus one because of my sharp senses. You know, I think I'm gonna try it. Why not? It's, it's a little tricky, but I'm gonna reroll that. Okay, I got the initiative. And now I can shoot with the bow, and I'm gonna do that again. Okay, this time it's even better. So we got five dice because of the critical and let's see. Okay, that's pretty good. So we did three damage, which means 
this guy is already wounded or the lady is already wounded that's a pretty good start so then I will do an attack here I guess I'm gonna have to try I guess it's a little tricky but I'm gonna try so I'm gonna move in here one and and here's the thing now uh, no, yeah, I'm going to move in, and they got long-ranged weapons. So, they could both have a spear, which means, um, what is it? The long-range weapons are tricky. i got to check that again. Okay, so here is how it works. They have a melee range of two in front. No, not behind them, but in front of them, their melee range is two. So we have to stop here and now we got to fight them and if we win the battle against them we can advance and then do the damage. And then they will even take a penalty because these long range weapons are only good in long range. They have a minus one advantage if they are close. But right now uh, we cannot really get close to them which could give them a bonus. Um, so let's see. We just gonna roll. I have now a double headed axe here instead of my katana because I try to break their shield. Um, I think they had a shield. Is, is that correct? Oh boy. Exactly. So I'm gonna use my double headed axe here. And that wasn't good. So no. No success here on my side. Okay, that I hope that's that's gonna be not gonna be too terrible. So I wonder, I wonder if I should now open the, <laughs> this door too. I mean, we are limited in time. <sighs> you know, it's tricky, but I think I hope at least I can deal with these guys. But it's not that 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 easy but you know what I'm actually gonna risk it I'm gonna go with it so these guys move one two three spaces this guy moves here one two three four or also three I think he moves here and I wonder where to move her um, I mean I could move her huh It's mm. a tough call. Where do I want to go? Hmm. It's really not that easy to decide. Maybe, I don't know. I think I want to go down here too. One, two, three. But on the other hand, you know, the thing is, I can still make that decision when I know what's behind there, I guess. So yeah, I think I can do that. I, I go here and now I open the door and I can roll a die. So we want a six. Ah, damn, okay, that's a three. And a three means that there are simply no, um, no, um, no horses. So the room is empty, basically. So it's not so great. So I think now, yeah, it doesn't really help that much. I should have moved her somewhere else. I should have stepped aside so now she could have done that, but um, that is too late now, I'm afraid. So it seems I gotta, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna move at least in the direction. Maybe I can help in the next turn. So let's say I'm going to go here. Ah, do I want to go there? I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay here. Okay, so now it's the creature's turn. And we start with the activation of this guy. And, or with a lady with the, with the bow. Composite bow. And let's see she is gonna attack 
Now, who? That's the that's the question here. Let, let me see. Now, in technically, she wants to attack this guy here. He is easiest to hit because she is a little further away and also um, more agile than the shooter. But the problem is, he is not exactly in line of sight. There is this guy a little bit in between, I think. It's a little tricky, but on the other hand, no, I guess it's okay. I guess it's just okay. So she can shoot at the dwarf because he's the one easiest to hit. Okay, um, so let's see. She's got a value of Wait a minute. A four. Okay. Ah, let's take the black dice. Okay, that's great. That's a miss. Yeah, awesome. So that didn't work out. I was lucky here. And now... Oh, actually, the value was reduced anyway because she's already wounded. And now we're going to see an attack. Um against the cat because of the equal distribution of um, of attacks. So this guy will now activate and go for the cat, but she's got a defensive shot. So let's see. It's a minus two. So that means I need a, I think I need a six to be successful here. And I'm absolutely successful. I do even five dice damage here. Okay, that's two hits. That's not great, but it's not that bad either. Okay, so, and the guy will stop immediately. And now it's the other guy here, and I'm not sure who his target will be. Okay, it's also the enemy which is easiest to hit, and that is... This guy has a 5 minus 1 for combat, so he's got a 4, and an agility of 3. She's got a 3, so he's going to go for the cat too. Um, so, how is he going to do that? It's an interesting question. Is he going to go into his melee range or is he going to move around? He might move around. I'm not sure, but it might be if he goes like this, he can avoid the melee range of this guy and he could then um, attack her with his spear kind of through the door. It's a little odd, but, but he can do it. So let's see. She is not in a good shape here because she is unarmed, technically, because she uses the bow. So that's a minus one. So she only has a two. That's not good at all. But she's doing just great. Look at that. That was a fantastic turn, I guess. So, yeah, for, for, for these guys, it's, it's looking pretty good until now. Okay, we go into the third turn now. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot again with her. And I'm going to try to hit this guy here. On the other hand, hmm. it's hard to tell. I mean, yeah, he's already down. I could kill him. He might be more dangerous than this guy. She's already wounded, so it's a little tricky. Hard to tell. You know what? I think I'm going to shoot her because then she doesn't get the defensive shot. So, yeah, I'm going to try that. Okay, that's a success. And we get even five dice here. So we should be able to kill her. And we, oh boy. Okay, yeah, she's definitely dead. Very good. And now I'm actually considering moving away from the scene here. One, two, three, four, five already trying to open this thing here. And now, 
The wizard. Wait a minute. Here's the thing. I can't. Uh, the problem is I'm kind of engaged with these guys because they have both this uh, two space range. That makes it a little tricky. Um, okay, so it seems I got to fight them. So the, the dwarf will fight. Uh, the question is whom? Probably this guy here. So let's see. Oh, you know, damn, I was, I think I was wrong here. That guy, he could have used the shield. Yeah, he could have used his shield to, to, to block the hits of the defensive shot. So I got to make that roll here. And he was not successful. Okay, great. So now I'm going to try to to fight the guy again. And that was also a success. I'm really lucky here. So I made a I, I did a hit. He can try to block again with his shield. He didn't make it. Uh, so that means I can do now uh, a lot of damage. I do seven dice. Yeah, I think I actually do seven dice here. Oops. And it's minus one against his armor. Okay, so he is totally dead. And, and now here's the interesting thing, and I'm not sure how I handle that. Usually when I kill someone, and I have a successful attack against someone with a uh, with a long-ranged weapon, I would be allowed to step forward. Um, the thing is now there is this guy, and it would be an advantage if I go here, because then I could... Uh, he would have a minus one um, against his combat uh, strength, because he has that long-ranged weapon, and now I'm adjacent to him. But the problem is... I'm not sure if I'm allowed to st to go there because there is still this guy. I just don't know that. Uh, I think it should be possible. It's a little tricky to say. I really don't know, actually. Maybe not. Maybe they are kind of protecting each other. So I'm going to leave it like this. Um, and... Instead, I think I'm going to move with her one space and use the green flame uh, as an attack against this guy. Is that a good idea? Hard to tell. Oh, that's the captain. That's not the one. I could also use the brain damage. Then he could not block the damage with his shield. Maybe that's a better idea. I'm gonna try the brain damage instead. Okay, that's a success. And that means I do four damage dice against this guy. Ah, that wasn't so great, it's just a single hit. But okay. I mean, he's down to three hits now, which means he's also wounded. And I think that's definitely helpful. And now, these guys will assist her. So we have a one, two, three, four, five, six. I think we're gonna end up here. And the other guy will run. Okay, so he can run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go, I don't know, I could go here for example. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now it's the melee fighter again and technically he would be engaged with both of us we are both in a combat range of two here so um maybe that wasn't too clever to go there 
This guy has a four. Actually, the dwarf is easier to hit than her because she's got an agility of four. So he will attack the dwarf. But he's got a minus one because he's wounded. Oh boy, the, the dwarf blundered. That sucks. Um, that's not a good idea. Do I want to accept that? Hard to tell. He's got a nine, but I don't want to lose my axe. I don't want to risk that it breaks. So I'm going to spend a fortune. Oh boy, look at that. That's an 11. That was definitely worth the fortune. Great. So no hit from this guy here. Okay, here's actually a stupid thing that I missed. Um, I should have done, obviously, I should have done the war dance at the very start of the adventure. That wasn't clever at all, but I can still do that. So um, the thing is, because these two are engaged, I can ignore the uh, the uh, the melee range of this guy or the line of engagement or whatever, and I can move one, two, three. Now the thing is, one, two, three. Okay, so I have this thing has a range of three. So the dwarf. And also this guy, they are all now within the range of that spell. So that means um, I'm going to do the Wardens now and hopefully I'm successful. And that is a fantastic result because we have a 6 here. Now because I'm still an apprentice, this goes down to a 5. But yeah, the, so the Wardens will be now in effect for 5 turns, which is awesome. Okay. And now, I think I'm going to do the attack here against this guy. He's wounded, so... Okay, let's see. So this is a 9, he's got a 10. However, I've got a plus 2. No, that's not true. I got a plus 1 for the war dance and a minus one for the X. So that means I'm, yeah, I got no modifier. So I got a five. The guy has a four, but he's wounded. So he only has a three. And that means that I did a hit actually. And that gives me a ton of a uh, ton of dice, but he can try to block with his shield. And he's not successful. It's only a four. And he would need a five plus to block successfully. So I got now, I think I got eight dice now. If I'm not mistaken, it's a f no, it's a four. No, I got seven dice. But that's still a lot. Uh, there we go. Okay. Okay, and okay, this guy, wow. I mean, that is just impressive. Seven hits. So the guy is, is I don't know, I mean, I kind of sliced him in, in eatable pieces. In, we can sell him on the market or whatever. So that was impressive like hell. And now I can move one two, three, four spaces with my chain, uh, chain mail. I only got a, uh, I got a minus one movement. So I'm gonna move back there. And now the cat moves one space and she opens the door. And so let's see what we find. Oh, that's a six. That's fantastic because this is a horse and no enemy. So that's fantastic. We got two horses. So one was back here and another one. I don't know. I got it somewhere here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. 
Awesome. So another one is in here. That's just great. So we only have to find one more horse. And uh, so I guess I want to move with this guy. One, two, three. I mean, yeah, probably mix. Do I want to do that? I could also move with him up here. But we still have a lot of time left. This was the fourth turn. We got 12 turns. The problem is we got to kill uh, the enemies. So, hmm. It's a little tricky. I think, yeah, I think I actually want to move up. One, two, three, four, five spaces here. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm going to use this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think he's got a movement range of seven. Yeah, seven spaces. Okay. So this is it. We go into the next turn. And now, hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I think first I want to move these guys and I want to run with them. So I start with the with the dwarf. Okay, he can run eight spaces now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's the question. You know, I think I'm going to move here. Eight. And now it's her. Oh, that wasn't that great. She can only move... Well, she can also move eight spaces, so we add this, but if it would have been better, she could have moved up to ten spaces. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go here. And the cat lady moves. Okay, she can move a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the thing is now, I'm standing here in position. And... Now, I want to move, well, I guess, I'm going to move with him one space. Now, the thing is, I want to move with him one, two spaces and open the door. Because, uh, yeah, if this doesn't work, she can open the other door and we're just in good shape. So, let's see uh, what we find. Of course, the best would be a six, then the adventure would be over and we would have won already. Uh, that didn't quite work out. Okay, that's a two. So that means it's empty. But there's nobody in there. So that means the last horse will be in there. That's for sure. The only question is, will there be also other creatures? So we go into turn six. That means we got still... Uh, yeah, we got six turns left. I guess we even have seven turns left now to, to, to open the door and to kill everybody. So I think that's pretty good. But first I want to bring my guys in position here again. So one, two, three. I don't know, I might go here, I guess. And she moves one, two, three, four. Maybe even five, why not? The dog moves one, two, three, four, five. And this guy might actually run. Okay, so he can move a lot. I mean, you can easily go here, I guess. Yeah, I think I might even want to go here. Okay, pretty cool. So we're in a good shape now, and now she opens the door. Cool, let's see what we find. And that's a six. There's the horse, and there's nobody else in there. That was easy. Okay, so the good news is we actually get each two experience points. First of all, because we found the horses, and if we have five, four turns left, and that is the case here, 
because we were lucky it wouldn't have worked out if we rolled not a six here but we managed to do that i mean it was we were lucky <laughs> so therefore we get an additional point which is totally awesome that means that these two guys have three uh, points and we might actually be able to let let me see where is that I, I, somewhere I, I noted it but I oh got okay, this is my great quest sheet here so this is this is basically the time this is the week we are in week 41 these are the adventures we uncovered and these are the victory points. So that means that, or the, the experience points. So the dwarf has again uh, three experience points, which is totally awesome. Uh, so does the sorceress, and the other guys also do have. So that is fantastic because it means um, we could all get an upgrade. And uh, that is just absolutely amazing. Now, in addition to this, we get eight, I think it's eight per hero, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Oh, gosh. This, uh, there we go. The reward. You found all the horses, the warlord of Ar Aris Thai Castle, Ah, yeah, rewards you with eight bucks each. Since you have shown your efficiency in locating them, the warlord invites you to join a wild boar hunt with the emperor. That sounds promising. And I think we have to go back first, though. I'm not totally sure, but it says that this warlord the warlord of the castle, whatever, he gives us the money. So I guess we got to go to the, back to the castle and there we will receive the money. That's what I guess. So yeah, uh, I guess we see uh, uh, each other on the campaign map. So before we go to the campaign map, I kind of gave each of my heroes one development. Now, this guy is a berserker. So we've seen that can be very useful. Basically, he is immune to fear and he cannot use shields or heavy armor. But he's got an extra melee attack with a minus one modifier. And I think that's very, very strong. This, the scout, has a lynx. I think it says links. I don't know what that is. Characters may re-roll results of one when rolling for initiative. I think that's pretty good. We have a plus two modifier already. So I think if we lose, odds are there might be a one involved. And in this way, um, we might be able to repair that. So I think this, is, this looks like an interesting option. Here I got the fast attacks, and this is also totally awesome. Once per turn, a character can attack rolling 3d6 instead of 2. And then you get the two most favorable results for him and add a penalty of minus 1 to the roll. Um, a double 1, and that's a little tricky, in any two of the three dice is regarded as a critical failure. So that's a little tricky. But I still think this is a really cool and strong um, uh, yeah, that's a very strong strong uh, strong skill. She's got the recovering mana skill once per turn, nay, once per game, I guess that's per quest, a character may use an action to recover mana. He must roll 46 for every result of one, he will lose one life point. For each result of two or higher, the character recovers one mana. Now, um, the thing is, costs an action, but it's okay, I guess. 
The point is, I'm a little bit afraid of other spellcasters that might show up, because then there might be situations where we have um, dispelling and stuff like that, and there you're going to need more mana. It's not that I just can. It's not only about casting these spells anymore. It's also about uh, trying to avoid spells of other magicians, and therefore that could be helpful, I guess. And uh, I mean, of course, you could simply. That's the thing. You, you might simply buy the mana potions, but they're pretty expensive. And honestly, I couldn't find that many great skills about, about in this lore thing. So I, I think that, I don't know, I, th I think I'm fine with what I have here. So therefore, um, yeah, that's pretty much it here. And... Now we're going to go to these uh, to this other uh, table uh, to the to the campaign map. Okay, so let's move back. We start. We if we roll a five, we're going to have an encounter. And nope. And then we're going to move down here. Same thing. Okay, that means we unlock. But I think there is no there is no uh, there's no quest here. There is no extra quest here. I think I already checked that. And now we got to roll for the city. I think on a... Oh, God. Oh, it's a castle. I think... I think it's very likely that we're going to have an encounter there. But let's see. That's a two. I'm, there's no encounter there. Actually, this is not... Wait a minute. Oh, look at that. We don't have to go down there. This is actually the castle. So we just stay here. Okay, we just go in, into the settlement, basically, and we have no encounter there. Okay, so uh, there's an inn where we could recover. There's a combat school here, so maybe we want to try to get a couple of experience points there. Let's see. Okay, we... We want to go to a combat school, um, but I don't think I'm not. I, I don't think I'm going to send him there because you need to pass an intelligence test, and I think this isn't so easy, and I don't want to waste money. So therefore, we're going to spend six bucks. So the three of us, the other three, go there. I guess he's a little grumpy about that, but come on, it's a school and you're more the berserker type. So let's see, we got to pass an intelligence test here. So she will start, she has an intelligence of three, which isn't that great either. So let's, let's hope for the best. And, oh boy, she failed, not good. Do I want to spend a fortune? You know I'm going to spend a fortune here. Why not? And she blew it again. <laughs> okay, not good for her, but she's going to go into the inn anyway. And so she can regain the fortune. Now it's him, and he needs a six. Oh boy. And he's going to try again. And this time he made it into the school, so he spent a fortune. And he's in the school now, and now he's going to roll a die here, and he wants a 5 or 6. And he's got a 3, so I'm not sure if he actually can roll that again. I've got to check that. We cannot change fortune points, uh, use fortune points for this roll, but we can use them for the test, of course. Uh, so now it's the wizard. Okay, she ate this. So we're going to roll here, and she made it. Look at that. She's got a five, so that means she gets one experience points, which is awesome. And now you can only get three experience points overall um, during the same year. Now I wonder if I could go there immediately again. Um, 
I don't think so. It, it feels a little weird. I don't think I should be able to do that. So I'm not going to do it. But it's cool. I got an experience point there. This is great. So let's see now. I think, yeah, now I'm going to go to the inn and I'm going to spend uh, six bucks there. Okay, so now at that point we got 21 bucks left. And I think I'm now ready for the hunt for the boar or beer, beer, I don't know. I think it's a beer. The thing is, I'm going to load this up and I think uh, I'm going to take a break from this campaign for a couple of days, play something else, you know, solo, off camera, and uh, I'm going to be back in, I don't know, one or two weeks or so, and then we're going to go hunting this creature. So, hope to see you on this next adventure or on lonesomegamer.com. Bye.